Hello everyone, it's Professor Rako here. Uh, today we are starting our uh, uh, chapter on leases. All right. So uh, depending on which book you're using, uh, the Kiso book, I believe this is chapter 21. The Spiceland book, it is chapter 15, I believe. Uh, so they're kind of, uh, you know, leases are thought of as a liability uh, to the lessee. Uh, so, so the Spiceland book puts it right after our long-term leases. I'm sorry, right after our uh, long-term liabilities. Uh, and then KISO just kind of has it separated out as a, kind of its own separate topic since we do cover the lessee and the lessor. So it's a receivable on one side and a liability on the other side. So this first video is just an introduction to some of the terms. Uh, most people are familiar with what the lease is. Like if you rent an apartment or something like that, you've signed a lease. But, you know, some, kind of some of our key terms, the lessor is the owner. The lessee is the user. Okay, so lessor is the owner of the property. The lessee is the user of the property. All right, so uh, companies like to lease assets instead of borrowing money to buy the assets sometimes because it might be better for financing uh, and they can have fixed rates on their financing. It also protects them from having uh, obsolete uh, items. So if you think about uh, if you're at a CPA firm and they lease or rent their uh, laptops that all the employees use. All right, the reason they do that because they don't want to buy them because after two or three years, those laptops are going to be kind of pretty much obsolete and they'll have to replace them. And so by doing this through leases, they get to turn back in the old laptops and get new ones. So it protects them from having a stack of obsolete uh, laptops laying around. Uh, you can flex, uh, it's very flexible. You can uh, tailor the contract between the lessee and the lessee, lessor to meet specific needs. Uh, and it, a lot of times it's less costly than financing. All right. So there's two main types of leases. All right. We have the finance lease. And so for this chapter, I, I typically tell students, I think this is one of the harder chapters because there's two different types of leases that we're going to look at. And then we're also going to look at it from the lessee standpoint and the lessor. All right. So we have different types of leases. We have the lessee side, the lessor side. Uh, and then we'll start adding in things like residual values and stuff like that. And it's just a bunch of stuff to keep straight. So, you know, really got to pay attention in this chapter and kind of keep up with things. All right. So there's two types of leases. All right. Finance and operating. All right. So under the old standard, uh, before they changed this just recently, it was a capital lease and an operating lease. All right. So they've kind of restructured how uh, we account for these. All right, so the finance lease, the lessee, okay, remember the lessee is the one that's going to use it, records an asset and a liability equal to the present value of the lease payments. All right, so we'll need to define lease payments in just a minute. But once again, anytime you see present value, means you're going to be calculating that present value. All right, so the lessee is going to record the asset and a liability on their books equal to the present value of these lease payments. Uh, the lessee will recognize interest expense on the liability using the effective interest method. So this will look similar to the effective interest tables that we've already done in, uh, in other chapters. And then also, we're going to record amortization expense on the asset. So the asset is called the right of use assets. Right of, sorry, right of use asset. And I just always abbreviate it RUA. Uh, and we'll do that on a straight line basis. So at the end of each year, we're going to amortize uh, this asset over the straight line basis. All right, so if it's an operating lease, which we'll get to in a future video, uh, they're going to record interest expense, okay, still using the effective interest method, but now we are going to amortize the asset such that total lease expense is the same each period. And we'll get into that, but essentially lease expense, and the books do it a little bit differently. Lease expense equals interest expense. All right, so we have interest using the effective interest and amortization. So you can see in the first one, the finance lease, uh, both of them, this is the effective interest method. And then what's going to be different is our amortization expense is going to be different between the two uh, methods. And we'll get to that when we do the lease exam. I mean, I'm sorry, the operating lease example, a few videos down the road. All right, so some key terms. All right, so we can see lease term. That is just how long the uh, lease lasts. All right, lease payments. So if up here, remember it said present value of the lease payments. Well, here's my definition of the lease payments, all right? Notice it says fixed payments and variable payments uh, when the change is known. I pretty much in my class just focus on fixed payments. And so this would be the annual rental 
payment. Okay. Uh, and then this variable payments, your teacher might get into that. I usually don't. If they do, just make sure you're uh, prepared to handle that. All right. So notice all three of these bullet points are under the lease payments. So they all go into it. All right. The guaranteed residual value. Okay. So a couple, this annual rental payment and notice here, PMT, it will be the annuity uh, in your calculator or using the annuity table. A guaranteed residual value or a bargain purchase option. So a guaranteed residual value, okay, residual value is kind of like salvage value, all right? So a, res, a guaranteed residual value. So residual value is basically what we expect the asset to be worth when the lease is over. Guaranteed just needs guaranteed by the lessee. All right, so if we say the asset's going to be worth 10000 the lessee guarantees that. All right, and so we'll have to determine how that affects our calculations. A bargain purchase option just means that uh, there's an option to purchase the uh, asset at the end of the lease by the leasee, lessee, and it's at such a bargain that it's it, we pretty much assume that they will make that purchase, right? Both of these items right here go in as your future value under calculator when we do that, so we'll get to that later. Bargain renewable, renewal option is just the ability to renew the lease. Uh, unguaranteed residual va value just obviously means there's a residual value, but it's unguaranteed. Uh, the implicit interest rate, all right, the lesser, lessor uses this, uses to calculate the rental payment. All right, so the lessor always determines what the payment's going to be, and they're going to do this based on what they want to earn on it, what the implicit interest rate that they want to earn. All right, the incremental borrowing rate, all right, so notice here, the lessor always uses the implicit rate. The lessee will use the implicit rate if it is known. If not, they use this incremental borrowing rate, which is basically just uh, what they would pay to, uh, if they had to uh, finance it somewhere else. All right, so finance leases, to be a finance lease, all right, and this is important, you must, meet, must be non-cancellable, which that usually will just say that in your problem. And at least one of the following. Now, notice it's not all of them. It's just one of them, right? All right, so ownership transfers to the lessee at the end of the term, right? If that's the case, we'll classify as a finance lease. That would be something that would be explicitly stated in the problem. Uh, if it contains a bargain purchase option, right, that would also have to be explicitly stated in the problem, meaning you could just read through the problem. And if it, one of those was there, it'd be uh, explicit. and You'd be able to say, okay, it's a finance lease. Uh, three is the lease term is for the major part of the asset's economic life. And we typically say that is 75%. So the lease term is equal to or greater than 75% of the asset's economic life. Uh, we will do that as a finance lease. If the present value of the sum of the lease payments and guaranteed residual value equals or exceeds substantially all the underlying assets fair value, and we use that benchmark as 90%. Then it will be a finance lease. So three and four are basically saying we're using the asset for either all of its lot, the majority of its life, or the majority of its value. All right. And then number five is asset is of such specialized nature that it is expected to have no alternative use to the lessor at the end of the lease term. All right. So if that was the case, it'd be a finance lease as well. All right. So really, what you'll see in most problems are those three. All right. Uh, those are what you'll see uh, when you're going through problems in your homework and probably on the test. Those are going to be the three main criteria uh, that are being given. All right. So this is just a brief intro to leases. What we'll do in the next video together is we'll walk through uh, a finance lease. And so what we have to do. And so remember, keep this in mind. We've got to walk through the lessee accounting and the lessor accounting. Uh, as we do, and then the different types of leases, whether it's finance or offering. So there's a lot to keep straight in this chapter. And so you really have to put in some time to make sure you're clear on what's being asked of you, especially come test time. All right. So that was a brief intro. Hope that gets us off and rolling for leases. Uh, so be sure to tune in next time as we start getting, uh, we'll start going through some examples. All right. Thanks. I'll see you next time.